Welcome to a Beegraphy tutorial, where we explore the power of cloud-based computational design. Today, we'll create an asymmetrical vase using algorithmic design, showcasing the limitless potential for unique and intriguing forms. The vase was created using Beegraphy. The video shows how the user can control the overall shape of the vase by adjusting the number of curve points, the height, and the distance between the curves. Let's get started. We start with the range input node, which sets an adjustable value range to control the vase's size. Next, we introduce the circle node. This node allows us to create a circular curve by specifying its radius. The radius, controlled by our range input node, determines the size of the circle. We use the divide by count node. This node takes a curve as input and divides it into a specified number of equal segments, generating a set of points along its path. The count of which we control with the newly created range input node, to which we give a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 15, calling it count one. The vector by 2PNT node allows us to create vectors between any two points. We'll use this node to create vectors that start at the center of the circle and point to each point on its circumference. Next, we'll add an amplitude vector node to give length to the resulting vectors. To break symmetry, we turn to the random number list node. This node generates a list of random numbers within a defined range, adding an element of unpredictability to our design process the values of which we will control with our range input nodes. Now we utilize the move node. This node takes a set of points and displaces them along their corresponding vectors. The varying lengths of our vectors, driven by randomness, will produce an asymmetrical pattern of points. Create a curve. We introduce the interpolate node. This node creates a smooth curve passing through a given set of points, transforming the scattered points into a visually pleasing, continuous line. To build the height of our vase, we will create several duplicates of our curve. The linear array node allows us to do just that. This node requires a direction vector and a count. For direction, we use the vector Z node, which defines a vector pointing straight up along the Z axis. We can control the distance between curves by adjusting the size of this vector. Next, we'll add a range input node to control the number of elements, setting the range between 5 and 10. We'll use the hide function to remove any unnecessary images, keeping the workspace clean and focused on the essential design elements. The scale and U node provides non-uniform scaling, which means we can adjust the dimensions of our curves along the X and Y axis while leaving their Z dimensions unchanged. And centroid node finds the center of each curve, allowing scaling relative to its center. Next, we'll introduce another random number list, which in this instance will be used to control the scaling of our image. By generating random values, this list will adjust the size of different elements, ensuring that the scaling remains varied and unpredictable. And of course, we'll control it with our range input node. The loft surface node allows us to create a smooth surface by connecting a series of curves. We use this node to generate the main body of our vase. The list item node allows us to access individual items in a list. We use this node to select the first curve from our array that will serve as the base of our vase and make it a surface using the curve to surface node. Finally, to enhance the visual appearance of our vase, we use the apply material node. This node allows us to assign a wide range of materials to our geometry, influencing its color, metallicity, roughness, and opacity. Now let's activate the demo from the menu to the right and see our model. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial helped. For more on computational design, 
please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to get the notifications. See you in the next tutorial.